hello friends up to last session we have seen all topics of infinite series such as partial sum then integral test comparison test root test ratio test and leibniz test for alternating series in today's session we are going to start with a absolutely convergent and conditionally convergent series and the power series now first of all what is the absolutely or conditionally convergent if sigma un is what is a given series then it is said to be absolutely convergent if sigma mode of un is convergent that means the mode series of original term original series is convergent then sigma un is said to be a convergent secondly when the series is said to be a conditionally convergent if sigma un is convergent but sigma mode un is divergent that means the given series is convergent but its mode series is divergent in that case the series is said to be a conditionally convergent now if sigma un is absolutely convergent that means it is convergent the theorem we have written is if mode series is convergent then original series is obviously convergent please remember this and the note we have written is if the convergent series is a positive term series that means if the given series is positive term series and it is convergent then it is absolutely convergent why because mode of un will be un so sigma un is convergent so sig all therefore sigma mode un is also going to be a convergent so please remember if it is a positive term series and the original series is convergent then its mode series is obviously convergent now we are going with a example determine the absolute or conditional convergence of the series sigma minus 1 raise to n into n square upon n cube plus 1 see here un is minus 1 raise to n into n square upon n cube plus 1 so mode un will be n square upon n cube plus 1 we are going to eliminate the plus or minus sign now this un is of mode un is of the form algebraic form numerator is algebraic denominator is algebraic that means we have a polynomial divided by polynomial so we are going to apply the comparison test so take vn from by dominant power of U, un in denominator dominant power of un in de, uh, numerator both we are going to take out and find out vn so n square upon n cube that will be 1 upon n now that will give you vn is equal to 1 upon n and you have to find the limit of mode un upon vn for condition of comparison test by limit comparison so un upon vn if you are applying limit then you will have a limit 1 correct so that is non zero finite that is our condition so condition is satisfied now sigma vn that is nothing but sigma 1 upon n is a p series where n raised to nothing that means n raised to 1 is given so p is 1 and p is 1 that's why sigma vn is divergent by p series so sigma vn is divergent therefore sigma mode un is also divergent by comparison test that means mode series is not convergent that means it is not absolutely convergent now you have to check the conditional convergence for that we are going to check out whether the original series is convergent or not now since original series is the alternating series minus 1 raised to n is given that means it is alternating series so mode un is n square upon n cube plus 1 now mode un plus 1 is n plus 1 whole square upon n plus 1 whole cube plus 1 taking the subtraction and simplifying all terms that will give you n if we are going to simplify all the terms then you that will give you uh, n raised to 4 plus 2n plus 1 in another bracket n square minus 1 divided by n cube plus 3n plus 3n square plus 2 inside another bracket n cube plus 1 now obviously this term is greater than 1 check out by putting n is equal to 1 2 3 so first all terms are positive and that's why this series is numerically decreasing now the limit of un if you are finding the limit to mode un then it will be a n limit n tends to infinity n square upon n cube plus 1 so n cube common out from denominator that will give you 1 upon n into 1 plus 1 upon n cube 
now 1 upon infinity will be 0 so you will have 1 0 and that's why this limit is 0 so both conditions are satisfied the given series is numerically decreasing and the limit of nth term is 0 so by Leibniz test sigma un is convergent that means original series is convergent but sigma mod un is divergent that means this given series sigma un is conditionally convergent okay same manner we are going to check out one another example determine whether the the series sigma cos n upon n square that means cos 1 upon 1 square cos 2 upon 2 square cos 3 upon 3 square and so on is convergent or divergent now see this given series is not an alternating series because if you are going to find out the value of cos 1 then cos 1 is positive 1 is considered in a form of radial same manner cos 2 is going to be negative cos 3 is also negative and cos 4 is also negative that means first term is positive then three terms are going to be negative then again three terms are going to be positive then again three will be negative so that is not alternating series so you cannot apply the Leibniz test secondly you have to apply you have to test the convergence so what we are going to do we are starting with a mode un now we are uh, we are all already aware of mode cos n upon n square but mode cos n has a maximum value 1 because cos has a range from minus 1 to plus 1 so mode cos n has a maximum value 1 so mode un will be less than or equal to 1 upon n square now it is less than or equal to 1 upon n square so our vn is 1 upon n square so we are going to use the comparison test for that sigma 1 upon n square that is sigma vn v is a p series with p is equal to 2 now p is 2 so p is 2 that's why this series is convergent because 2 is greater than 1 now sigma vn is convergent so sigma mod un is of obviously convergent correct by comparison test so sigma mod un is convergent and since sigma mod un is convergent so by our condition of absolute convergent if mode series is convergent that means the given series sigma un is absolutely convergent and you are already aware of if the go mode series is convergent that, that given series is absolutely convergent that means the series is convergent because we have written the theorem that's why the given series is convergent by theorem correct now we are going on to the power series now see up to here we have seen all the topics where where whatever the series are given they are given in given in some numerical form correct but now we are starting with a power series that means now we are starting with the variable series here the series of the form sigma a n into x minus a raised to n where n is running from 0 to infinite that means a 0 plus a 1 into x minus a plus a 2 into x minus a whole square and so on so on so on see here x is a variable correct because you don't know what is the exact value of x x can have any value from real line correct a x minus a where a small a is called a center of a series or you can say that series about that point x is equal to a okay please remember this and a n a n are any reals that means a n has any real value which we have seen in a simple form whatever the series we have written such as a n has any value so please remember here x is variable so now the convergence is depending on the values of x for different values of x uh, your series is going to be either convergent or divergent so depend it is the it is dependent on the values of x here we have written one simple example sigma n running from 0 to infinity x raised to n upon n factorial that is nothing but 1 plus x upon 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on okay and this series is a series in powers of x that means the center of a series is a 0 okay please remember this thing now starting with one example test the convergence of a series 1 upon 1 into 2 into 3 plus x upon 2 in, 4 into 5 into 6 
plus x square upon 7 into 8 into 9 plus dot 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 where x is greater than 0. Now you have already given that x is greater than 0. That means half of real line is given. So what we are going to do un we are starting with a un. So first write down un. Un is nothing but x raised to n minus 1. Correct. If you are starting with n is equal to 1 then you have to write down into form of x raised to n minus 1. If you are starting with 0 then you have to write it in a form of x raised to n. It is depending on you wherever you have to start with you can start with that n. So un is equal to x raised to n minus 1. Now for denominator we are starting with the first 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 term of denominator that is nothing but 1, 4, 7 and so on. So they, this that is your arithmetic series with a difference 3. So we are if you have to find out the nth term then it will be a, a plus n minus 1 into d. So that's why a is nothing but 1 and d is nothing but 3. So that will give you if you are putting the values then you will have 2, 3 and minus 2. Same manner second 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 term if you are going to consider then that will give you the value 3n minus 1 and if you are going to consider only the last term then 3, 6, 9 that means it is nothing but it is a 3n. So your un is x raised to n minus 1 upon 3n minus 2, 3n minus 1, 3n. That means un plus 1 will be x raised to n upon 3n plus 1, 3n plus 2, 3n plus 3. Now applying the ratio test. See, at the time of ratio test, we have already discussed that either you can find un plus 1 upon un or you can find un upon un plus 1. Only the conditions are going to be changed out according to the ratio. So, we are starting with un upon un plus 1 and simplifying that terms. From the numerator, we are going to common out n from each bracket. So, you will have n common, n common, n common. That means n cube is common out from numerator n cube is common out from denominator and that will give you the simplified form 3 plus 1 upon n into the another bracket 3 plus 2 upon n plus 3 plus 3 upon n divided by 3 minus 1 upon n 3 minus 2 upon n into 3 into 1 upon x. Now x raised to n minus 1 and x that will the, give you the remaining part x. Now apply limit to the un. If you are applying limit to the un then 1 upon n has a value 0. So you will have a final answer 3 into 3 into 3 divided by 3 into 3 into 3 whole into 1 upon x. That means 3, 3, 3 will be cancelled out and you will have only 1 upon x. So if you are starting with the conditions of a ratio test, then since you have taken un upon un plus 1, so in that case if the limit is greater than 1, then the series is convergent. That means 1 upon x is greater than 1, then the series is convergent. That will give you x is less than 1, then series is convergent. And since x is already greater than 0, so 0 is less than x is less than 1, then the series is convergent. Same manner for 1 upon x is less than 1, then the series is divergent. That means x is greater than 1, then your series is divergent. And for x is equal to 1, for x is equal to 1, your test fails. In that case, we are going to apply one another test. So put x is equal to 1 in un, then your un is reducing in the form of 1 upon 3n minus 2, 3n minus 1 and 3n. This is nothing but this is a polynomial function as we have seen in, we are going to go apply the comparison test because of numerator and denominator all bo both are algebraic functions. So uh, we are going to take a dominant from, for, part from numerator, dominant from denominator and that will give you Vn is equal to 1 upon n cube. And now if you are going to apply limit to the Un upon Vn for limit comparison test, then it will be a limit n tends to infinity n cube upon n cube into 3 minus 2 by n, 3 minus 1 by n into 3. So n cube, n cube will be cancelled out. If here we have used simplified form of Un. So n cube n cube will be cancelled out and you will have final limit 1 upon 27. Now 1 upon 27 is a non-zero finite number. So by if you are to apply the comparison test then sigma vn is a p series with p is equal to 3 greater than 1. So by p series sigma vn is convergent and sigma vn is convergent that's why your sigma un is also convergent. So sigma un is convergent for x is equal to 1. Okay, that means now what you have a as a condition, 
for 0 less than x less than or equal to 1, your series is convergent and for x greater than 1, your series is divergent, correct? So, see here we have discussed three partitions of real line, half of real line. From 0 to 1, 1 is included. For that values of x, your series is con convergent. And from 1 to infinite, your series is going to be divergent. That means if you are taking any value greater than 1, then this series is going to be divergent. Now, going with one another example, test the convergence of a series. Sigma n is running from 0 to infinity. n plus 1 upon n plus 2 whole raised to n into x raised to n, where x is greater than 0. Now see, first we have applied the ratio test. Now we are going to apply the root test because whole raised to n is already here. So un is nothing but n plus 1 upon n plus 2 whole raised to n into x raised to n. So each term has a power n. So we are going to apply the nth root that will give you un raised to 1 upon n is equal to n plus 1 upon n plus 2 into x. And if you are going to apply limit to the nth root of n, then you will have limit n tends to infinite un raised to 1 upon n is equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 upon n divided by 1 plus 2 upon n into x. We, are, we have simplified un and now apply limit that will give you the limit x. So here x is greater than 0. That's why now your condition is depending on the conditions of root test. According to root test for x, whatever the limit is less than 1, then your series is convergent. So, x is less than 1, then your series is convergent. x is greater than 1, then your series is divergent. And for x is equal to 1, test fails. Test fails, that means we are going to apply another test. So, we, what you have, un is equal to n plus 1 upon n plus 2 raised to n. Now, we are going to, since we are already aware of, this is a simple power series, so simple power series. So what we are going to do, we are going to divide numerator and denominator with n. So it will be of the form 1 plus 1 upon n divided by 1 plus 2 upon n whole raised to n. So separating the numerator and denominator and applying the limit, that will give you limit n tends to infinite un is equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 upon n raised to n divided by 1 plus 2 upon n raised to n. Now, numerator is obviously in the standard form. For denominator, we are going to multiply and divide with 2 in power. That will give 1 plus 2 by n raised to n by 2 whole raised to 2. So, both the limits are going to be form of e. So, you have e upon e square and that will have a value 1 upon e. So, un has a limit non-zero. So, by test of divergence, un is going to be divergent for x is equal to 1. So now for your series, your condition will be of the form for 0 less than x less than 1, the given series is convergent and for x greater than or equal to 1, your series is going to be divergent. That means from 0 to 1 series converges and for x greater than or equal to 1 series is diverges. These are the all topics we are going to, we have covered out. If you have any query, or any doubt regarding this topic, then please feel free to contact me. Thank you.